Today we are going to learn how to classify major and minor chords. Listen for this example. As you can see, it's been classified as major. So basically we will learn how to convert an audio file to a spectrogram and then we are going to learn how to build a CNN model that classify those images. So basically those images are audio files. So let's start this uh, very interesting tutorial. So we will start with uh, investigating uh, the data. We will uh, download uh, the data set from uh, Kegel and then we'll start with a, a simple discovery, listen to the audio and learn how to convert it to a spectrogram. Then we will uh, show and demonstrate this uh, spectrogram and finally we'll create a for, a for loop that convert or transform all the audio files to a spectrogram image files. We will use a um, TensorFlow uh, 2.10 and uh, several uh, Python libraries that are being displayed right now. And we will also use a uh, Delibrosa Python library that help us to um, transform audio files. So let's go to the Kaggle website and let's search for our dataset. Okay, it's called a musical instrument chords, chord. Okay, that is the one. As, as you can see, it has two folders. One is a major chords and the other one is minor chords. So basically this model will be a binary model whether it's a major, minor chord or a major chord. So let's download the zip file and extract it to a local folder. Let's open one of the folders and let's hear one of the sample audio files. Okay, so the sample data is okay. We have listened to some uh, major chords and some minor chords. So now let's start uh, coding. Let's start with uh, importing some uh, Python and Python libraries. And then we will start with uh, loading uh, a sample audio file and try to investigate it and convert it to a spectrogram. Let's load one of the audio files using the Librosa Python library. As uh, you can see, we will choose one of the audio files, uh, a, a random file, and let's copy the, the exact folder and the exact file name. Let's change the directions of the slashes. And uh, basically the, the Y is the, is the raw data. This is the, the audio file. And the SR is the sample rate. Okay, next. <laughs> so 
So this SR is, is a, an array and let's uh, print the first uh, values of this array just to just to discover uh, a basic discovery of this array. Let's also print the shape. This y variable is a, a number array, so let's see what is the shape of this uh, number array. And let's also print the sample rate. Uh, it, it's a, a, another output of this uh, function that we will need it later. So let's run it. Okay, these are the 10, the first 10 values. So this is the number array and the sample rate. So you can see there are a, a lot of uh, values, but the shape is a very simple one. So not, now let's convert this audio file to a spectrogram, which is a, a visual of this uh, audio. So we will use this uh, Librosa uh, function we will send it as an argument our row data and we will uh, convert convert it to a, another number array based on the function amplitude to dv we also need the the absolute value uh, in order to project the information we cannot project a, a, a values under zero so once again, let's print the shape of this converted uh, audio. Let's also print the type just to double check it's a, a, a new number array. Next, uh, since the values uh, inside this uh, variable s underscore db are between zero and one, we'll duplicate it on 255. So we basically are going to create a, a, a black and white, a, a gray image that each of the, the values are between 0 and 255. So we will call this uh, image audio, audio as image. Let's print it just to double check that the values are between 0 and 255. Let's run it. So you can see that the shape is 1025 on 97 and the values are bigger than 0 and 1. Let's say uh, um, save this image to our uh, temporary file and then it will be more useful to display the image as uh, display sorry the, the file as an image. So we will use the cv2 I'm, I'm right function. Let's run it. Now let's go to the relevant folder and see our audio as an image. So this is our gray image that uh, represent our audio file, this major under six wav. So the next step is converting all the audio files to an uh, images. So we will start with the with the major files, with the major uh, folder, major child folder. So let's define the, the path, the path for this uh, saved images. So we will store it on our main folder with another subfolder called new. And under this new folder will be a major images and minor images. Let's check if the folder exists, and if the folder is not exist, we will create one.
Okay, this uh, variable major audio files will have the list of all the audio major WAV files and then we can start to loop inside uh, these all uh, files. So basically we are going to duplicate the process that we have done earlier. We will load each of the files and then convert it to an image file and save it to, to our new folder. Since the, the file variable contains the full path of the, of the original image, we have to extract out of it only the, the file name, only, let's say, the, the last characters. So uh, this uh, next script, script help us to extract the, only the, the file name of the, of the Y file and not the full path. And now we will add in the full new path where to store this uh, file name. And of course, it will be saved as a PNG file and not as an audio file. Okay, let's print the file name just to see the progress. And some comments that this only deals with the major files. So let's run it. Okay, you can see all the files running. And we go to this new folder, major folder, and you can see all the images being created in real time. Let's choose one of the images. You can see this gray image. And now we are ready to continue and duplicate the process to the minor files. So we'll copy and paste the, the major files process and please notice and be careful to change all the relevant names and to minor instead of major. Don't forget it, there are uh, several places that has to be changed. Let's run it again. It will run again through all the major files and then go next to the minor files. Cool. So now we have under the new folder the minor files images as well. As you can see for a human eye it looks the same but for a convolution model it has the ability to distinguish between a major files and a minor files. So let's test one of the images just to see and display it using a Python code. So we will use the CV2 uh, I'm read function. Change the slashes, of course. And use the I'm show. We have to move the, the ident of, of this uh, uh, last script. So it's not, it shouldn't be under the for loop. Okay, now it's fixed. And we can run it again. And hopefully we will 
see after the creation of the files uh, um, an image with the with the one that we have chosen great Now let's continue to the next step. Uh, before we continue for the next step, let's print the, the shape of, of the images. It's a very important uh, issue I would like to, to display. It. So let's, for example, print the shape in the major files. Let's run it again. Sorry, and as you can see, I add it on the minor side minor uh, audience. As you can see, there is a different shapes between the images. Some are on 95, some on 100, some is 97. So we have to choose uh, one of the these shapes for our CNN model, since the CNN model runs only on a one dedicated chip. So let's start building our CNN model. Let's import the relevant uh, Python libraries. And after that, we are ready to start um, loading the data. Of course, we had to, to import the uh, uh, Keras functions. Let's start with those functions. I believe that we need more later, so I will add them to the code as well. Of course, all my code will be in my GitHub, so you can use it uh, freely. Okay, this is important. We'll define the shape for our convolution model and the batch, batch, batch size, it will be 32. So let's use Keras uh, image data generator. We will, uh, first of all, rescale all the images between zero and one by dividing, dividing the values to 255. And we will use validation split of 20% uh, since we have one data set the, in the loading process we'll divide it to 80% to the training and 20% to the validation. So now let's uh, create our train data set. It will be based on the flow from directory function. So we will send to the function several arguments the first argument is the name of the uh, new folder. So under the new folder, I remind you there are uh, two subfolder. One is the major and one is the minor. So the first argument is the name of the, the folder. And the next one is the batch size, which is 32. Next, uh, the target size, which is 1025 by 97. Then the subset training, it's important that all the data will be defined as a training data. Color mode, grayscale, all the images are grayscale and not colored. And the class mode is also important. It's a binary model, means it's a zero or one values. Let's create also the validation data set and we replace it to validation as subset argument. Let's run it. As you can see, the data is loaded, 60, 6, 688 train, train images and 171 uh, test or validation images. Let's uh, display one of the, the images that to double, just to double check that we have loaded it correctly. So in order to do that, first we will grab the, the first batch, the first 32 images. So this is the command to, to do it. Now, in order to extract uh, one of the images, let's for example, take uh, image number five. We will grab out, grab out of batch one, uh, position zero, position five. That means position zero is an image and position one is 
label. So batch by 0 by 5 is image and batch 1 0 1 0 5 is its label. So let's uh, print the, the image shape. So we are expecting to see the image. Let's show it and let's use the, the label name as the title of the image. We will use the, the PyPlot in order to display the image. Let's run it. So as you can see, the label is one. It can be zero or one. And you, you can see and display the displayed image. Great. Let's continue. Now we are going to uh, build our model. First, first, let's define our optimizer. We will use the uh, Adam and let's define um, the le learning rate. Now let's uh, create a sequential uh, model. should be model equals okay and now we will add the relevant layers the first one will be a convolutional convolutional 2d layer we will uh, retrite on 64 filters the kernel will be free by free the activation uh, relative for CNN models and the input shape is 1025 by 97 by 1 so this is our uh, chosen input shape from uh, all the relevant uh, images and the last value 1 is for gray image then we will add the max pooling uh, layer let's continue with another convolutional uh, 2d layer and now we will add 128 filters same activation and once again we will add a max pooling layer so we will duplicate it and run it with 256 filters and another layer of 512 filters next we are going to flatten the, the result and we will add a flatten layer and we will add a dense fully connected uh, layer i already tried it with the 124 1024 uh, filters it's got a, a very nice result and of course, as last, we, had, we have to add the, the dense layer, which is only a, a one argument, because it's a binary. It's a activation based on sigmoid, so it may be zero or one as the result. Now we will compile the model. By using a binary cross trophy, Cross entropy, of course. Our optimizer will be the one that we defined earlier, and the matrix will be val sorry accuracy, not val accuracy. Accuracy. Let's define the steps per epoch. Basically, it's the number of total samples divided by our bed size. We will use this uh, NumPy array in order to, to get a, a, like an a, a integer value. Okay. We'll do the same for the validation steps. Let's uh, define our saved uh, model. Our uh, best model we will store in a temporary file and we will call it audio major minor dot h5 now let's say uh, create a, a, a checkpoint for our uh, best model 
That means that we are going to monitor during the training the, the VAL accuracy and save only if the model is being improved for one iteration to another. If the training is not improved, the new, the new result will not be saved. So basically this uh, .h5 file will have only the best, the best result, the best weights. So finally, uh, it's the training command. We will use the fit command. Uh, we will send the train data set, the steps per epoch. We will run it on a 200 epoch. It's about a uh, half an hour training, depend on your uh, GPU card, the validation data and the validation steps. We will also use uh, the callbacks in order to save only the best model. Are we ready? Oh, we have to, there is a, a spelling uh, with this sequential uh, text. So let's run the model and start the training. Okay, this is the, the first image from our previous card. And now this is the training. As you can see, it would be 200, uh, 200 epochs. and the training has started. So uh, in order to, to save some time, I run it on a fast forward process and run it directly uh, to the final step. And after this uh, training would be finished, let's start writing the code for testing our model. Testing means choosing an audio file and try to predict if it's a major or a minor chord. So, as always, let's start with importing the relevant uh, Python libraries. We will also import the sound device Python library. You should pip install it. Uh, this uh, Python library has the ability to um, play the sound of the audio. Okay, let's uh, load the model, load the saved model. We will copy the name of the, the file. Let's load it and let's print the model summary just to double check that it's been loaded correctly. Let's run it. Okay, as you can see, these are all the layers. So let's continue. Let's define the shape. It will be relevant for resize the, the audio. So let's first of all, let's write a function that uh, duplicate the process that we have done with the, with the discovery or, or creating the, the, the images. So we will store it inside a, a function. So we will load the audio and convert it to a uh, visual image. The same process as our first step. But we will add another command. We have to resize this image to our model trained resize. So we will use the CV2 uh, resize uh, function. We will send us this converted uh, audio image and our uh, desired shape, which is 100, 1025 by 97. And now our resized image is ready. So let's do some more uh, preparation for this image, uh, uh, to this image, to our uh, model. Let's add uh, the relevant uh, Keras uh, libraries. We, we need to convert our image 
and prepare it for our uh, predicted uh, model. So we will uh, use the img to array function and we convert our resize image to, uh, to this uh, image result. Then we will add another dimensions because our model needs a batch of images. So we are going to create a batch that there is only one image inside it. And then we divide it to 255 because our model was trained of values between 0 and 1. So now let's load a, a test image. Let's take one of the images. Let's get the full path of this. So it's not an image, it's an, it's an audio. So let's load this uh, audio file. And uh, before running the prediction, let's run a simple, uh, a simple sound. Let's hear the image to see that uh, and it works fine so we will load uh, the image and play it using the sound uh, uh, the sound device uh, python library so let's uh, hear it Okay, the file uh, is loaded uh, correctly, we can hear the sound. So now let's try and run the preparation process of this audio file. Basically it's going to convert it to an image file that is ready for our modern model and then we will send this image uh, file to our uh, modern and let's print the result. Let's see what would be the outcome. As you can see, we have an error. So the shape is upside down, or we have to change the value. The position of the value should be uh, in the in a reverse order. So let's run it again. As you can see, we got a prediction value of 0 0.1. So what does it mean that uh, we got a, a result of uh, 0 0.1? Since it's a sigmoid uh, classification uh, function as the last layer, that means that all the values under 0 0.5 are major chords and all the values above 0 0.5 are minor chords. So let's add this script. Let's print uh, this description and let's run it again. Nice. So this one's a major chord. As you can see the, the text, it's a major chord. So not, now let's try it and test it or, uh, on another file. Let's choose one of the minor chords and do the same process. Let's copy the name of the file and run it as a test one, as a test uh, file for the same prediction model.
Okay, we are ready to run the model once again. So after hearing the sound, we are expecting to see a minor chord. Cool! Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye bye.